What's up guys, it's Zach Penny here, and today I give you the top five diet mistakes that people make when they're trying to cut fat, and what you should avoid. All right guys, so before we get started today, um, I did wanna give my own product a little plug here, uh, because there's been a lot of people messaging me, like teens saying, when's your teen program coming out? And it is officially live. So if you head to massivefam.com, you can find the student special there. I wanted to put together a program of diet and training that suits like teenagers living at home, students. So I'm kind of basing it around the student kind of thing. So I was thinking, how can I kind of do that and offer a lot to like, the, to answer the questions that I get in, in one kind of program product? Um, that's affordable too. And what I figured is I wrote an ebook specifically for this product on how to fit in the meals that I give you um, into your student lifestyle. Like for example, like how to fit in the meal plan with what your mom's cooking for dinner. Um, also, if you don't have a lot of you know equipment or you know, cooking accessories. And I also chucked in like my favorite cooking techniques, like specifically how I cook chicken, steak, rice, carp, everything. Like I literally, it's about 7,000 words and I wrote it just thinking, every bit of tips and advice I could give like students and teenagers on dieting, it's that. So that coupled with a training program and diet, I think is gonna be sick. So I have no shame at all in plugging this. If you wanna give it a crack guys, head to massivefam.com, it is in the bio as well. Um, but essentially it's what I've, I've created for you guys. So it's special for these like four days only, I think it's gonna be sick. Um, anyway, so today's topic is uh, diet mistakes. Now. I get a lot of, I see a lot of guys doing the same kind of things and it makes me think of when I started, what I was doing when I was trying to cut fat and the mistakes I was making. And it's pretty funny when I think back to what I was what I was doing, but I mean, there's guys out there that are doing the exact same thing. So I remember like when I started, I'd be making, I'd, I'd be putting in the work. That's, that's the thing is that I was putting in, in the work when I was younger, trying to get lean and I was going through like the hard time dieting obviously, but it wasn't really doing anything. And I'd get to a point where I'd plateau and it'd be like, great, that's kind of where you're gonna sit. You're gonna sit at 10% body fat now, you're not gonna get abs out. And it'd be like that for weeks. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing wrong because I thought I was doing everything right. I was reading what people were doing, I was copying what they were doing. And I thought I was doing the right things and I was working hard too, like I said, like I was dieting really hard doing all the cardio and it just wasn't changing my body um, because I, didn't, I just didn't really know what I was doing. So I'll go through the top mistakes today that I made and I've done in the past and I think you guys should look out for. And hopefully you can take something from that and, and learn from me and my mistakes. So um, I like doing these videos because I think if I had have watched this when I was younger, I would have learned a lot and would have saved me years of hassle. So I feel like it's actually very effective. So if you need to get a pen and paper, write some shit down, um, <laughs> write these little steps down and do what you will. Also, how cool is this shaker? This uh, Harry Potter shaker I've got in America. Loving it as well. So. Don't mind that, just uh, chilling there. And by the way guys, this sale is only for four days too on massivefam.com, so make sure you don't miss out. Now, let's start with the diet mistakes. Mistake number one is not tracking. Now, when I started, I wouldn't track any of the calories or macros in foods. I kind of would just eat bro foods and hope that that was doing the job. I mean, meal plans are great, and I follow them still to this day, but you need to be tracking your calories from the meal plan so you can stick to that every day. So for example, if you have your calories and, and macros set out, Great. Now I recommend doing following a meal plan with those calories and then sticking to that. And then over time you'll be reducing that when you plateau. So if you're not tracking, which is what I wasn't doing, you don't really know where you're at. So all you can do is just eat nothing and hope that you're in a calorie deficit, which most time you are, but then what happens when you plateau? And that's the issue here is that when you plateau then you don't know what to do. You can't pull any more calories out because you, you kind of feel like you're eating nothing already. So that's, that's the problem is that if you're tracking, what you can do is you know exactly where you're at. So for example, say you're eating 2000 calories, you go, okay, cool, I'm eating 2000 and you're losing weight, then you stop, you drop it to 1900, you start losing weight again. And then you kind of hit that, it's a linear like process where you start going down a bit, you might increase cardio, but at least you know that your body will burn fat at that calorie level. And then you can kind of play around with your maintenance. And then when it's time to bulk up again, you can throw in 300, 400 calories to find your maintenance from your deficit calories. And that way you're not just thinking, oh yeah, I used to eat chicken and broccoli, now I eat <laughs> beef and all the rice. It's kind of like, it, it, at least if you're tracking your calories and macros, then you know where your body's at, you know how you're responding to that level, and you can adjust accordingly. So you know, it's just a much more um, practice approach, I guess, like it's, it's much more, there's much more thought going into it. Instead of just mindlessly eating, you know what you're eating, you know the numbers behind the food, and then you can adjust that from there. So I think this is very like, helpful, especially when you get into a really lean uh, stage of a diet and the later stages of a diet, because as you get leaner, you get a need to like carefully tailor the diet to, to how your body is. So when guys message me saying they've plateaued and they really can't get that last bit of ab definition out, if I know exactly how many calories they're taking in, like you know roughly how many calories, 
we can make adjustments. But if I don't, if I don't know and they don't know, how, how can I say just pull some food out? It, it's very vague. So track your calories, guys. Track your macros. Make sure your protein's high enough and carbs and fats you can play around with there. But just please, please track it. So mistake number two is over dieting. Now this is literally exactly what you think it means. It is eating too little. So like eating like a rabbit or eating bear's diet when you could really be eating a lot more. Now. Initially, this will, be, this will be good for fat loss because you'll see great fat loss results because obviously you're eating nothing. If you're gonna eat like two sticks of celery a day, you're gonna get lean, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> but over time, what happens? Then you can't train. If you're eating two sticks of celery, you'll probably die. But that's the thing, it also comes from like mistake number one is if you're not tracking, then you're kind of more inclined to over diet and just pull everything out. So I did this when I was younger, I would go, okay, we're cutting now. So I would have just chicken breast only is my meats. I would have only green vegetables, no oil, no butter, nothing, butter, no butter, uh, nothing that essentially added any extra calories. So, <laughs> sorry, somebody said I should film a whole video in American accent, I'll, I'll do it soon. Uh, but I would basically not add any extra calories where possible. So I'd eat the bare minimum, like chicken breast, salad, chicken breast, vegetables, dry seasoning. So the calories I probably had at one point was like a thousand if I worked it out, but I didn't, I'd never counted them. So that's the thing, I didn't even know where I was at, I was just eating. So. That's one problem. Initially, you'll get fat loss results. Of course you are, you're eating nothing. But then when your body adapts and you start feeling like shit, what do you do from there? So then you need more food, but then it's hard to eat, mentally it's hard to eat more food when you're trying to lose fat. It just doesn't feel right. So if you like fix this from the start and make sure you're not over dieting and, and not taking too many calories out too quick, then you'll be a lot better in the long run. So I suggest track your calories, track your macros and slowly reduce them. So say, for example, if you don't know where to start, just start with exactly what you're eating right now or just construct a meal plan and go, let's try this. So for example, say you've got your calories, you've got your, your macros there laid out like we did in step one. Now stick to that and slowly reduce them. So don't pull everything out too quick. Don't go too crazy with your cardio. Just slowly do things like very slow. And that way, at least you've got somewhere to go with it. So you're not playing all your cards at once. You're not doing 60 minutes of cardio like twice a day with no food in the system because in two weeks or a month, you're gonna get sick results. But down the track, when you when you plateau and you need to change something, you'll have nothing to change. And that's the issue is that you can't change anything. You've got nowhere to go. So you're basically digging yourself a hole to an early death, mate. So please, don't over diet. Now, another mistake I see people make is huge cheat days. Now, this is hard to talk about. I've made a few videos on cheat days and refeeds because everybody is so different, but Essentially, if you have a huge cheat day, you can undo a lot of work that you've done throughout that week. So let's, for example, I've done this in one of my other videos. Let's say for six days, you eat very well and you create a, let's say, 500 calorie deficit per day. So what's that over six days? You've got a 3000 calorie deficit. Let's say on the seventh day, you eat in like a 7,000 calorie surplus it's gonna offset a lot of that deficit that you made during the week. There's a few variables at play that will actually like reduce the impact of that, but still, it's not great. But the thing is here too, is that if you're really, really lean, like if you're like 5% body fat, a whole day of eating anything you want won't do anything to you. Like I, when I was at my leanest, like probably a month ago, I could, I even tested it. I think I had 8,000 calories in a single day just to try. Um, those Ben and Jerry's tubs and the haagen peanut butter ice cream, they got me but I didn't even mean to hit 8,000, I just hit it. <laughs> but you, I did that for a day, looked better the next day, and then even the next day after that looked better. So I realized, I'm like, great, I'm kind of at the body fat percentage where I can eat anything, and it was cool. But say now I'm a little bit, little bit fatter, maybe like a kilo or two fatter since America, so I can't have giant cheat days now because I know that my body's not gonna respond that well. So I need to reel it in a little bit. So if you're having huge cheat days and you're not peeled, I really wouldn't recommend it. It's, for one, it's creating a bad like relationship with food because you're constantly binging, then you feel terrible and you feel guilty and you're over dieting for the, for the next week. So I probably wouldn't recommend it at all. But if you guys are doing this, like especially if you're starting out and you're having giant cheat days, I really just wouldn't recommend it. I, instead, up your carbs for a day, maybe go out for dinner that night or just treat yourself to something you haven't had like in your diet that you wanna eat. You know, just like don't go crazy with it. A 3000 calorie day is, is okay, but a 10 or an 8000 probably won't be good for you. So just know that cheat days can set you back. Um, and as long as you are aware of that, and it depends on where you're at in your fat loss journey too. If you're, like I said, if you're at the very end, you're peeled, you're dialed in, ready to step on stage, do what you want. You can eat what you want for a day. It's not gonna do anything. But if you're still trying to, if you're struggling to burn the fat and it really feels like it's not coming off, I wouldn't recommend a cheat day. Yeah, I think I see like a lot of people that do put these cheat days in and then they say, yeah, but I'm eating nothing during the week. And it's like, if they're eating 1600 calories 
on a dieting day and then they have a huge blowout day in the weekend, they could really not have that blowout day and then they could diet on 2000 per day and achieve the same results. So you don't have to punish yourself as much during the week if you kind of reel it in on that on that sixth, seventh day of you know cheating, if you like. So I think refeed days are good, they have their place. Check out the other videos on that. But it depends on the person, depends on where you're at. But overall, I'd say don't have cheat days. Now the next mistake I wanna talk about is just not knowing about food. It's very simple, but it gets a lot of people. So I think a lot of people buy into that you can only eat clean food, uh, and then you have to avoid certain foods. Like some, there's some special fat burning foods, there's some bulking foods, there's some foods that you should entirely avoid at all costs. And it's like, that's just not right, because that's way too restrictive. It's just a simplistic way of looking at it. What you should acknowledge is that the you know clean foods, if you like, are gonna be better for your body to, to process and break down generally, okay? So that's why in all of the programs of like my clients, 99% of the diet is clean food. Like I'm not gonna give you a Big Mac <laughs> as your lunch meal. It's like, I'm gonna give you chicken breast, sweet potato, vegetables. But then I also can say, use one of your favorite sources, you know? So I'm, I'm not of like, I'm a big fan of keeping in things that you love, like your favorite sauce. If people say, oh yeah, but isn't mayonnaise bad for you? It's like, nah man, <laughs> if you're dieting and you're having like 10 grams of mayonnaise on a Japanese pancake or Japanese omelet, that will make the meal. And also it's fine. It's adding what, like 80 calories? Great, let's factor that in. It's being consistent, it's a constant, you don't need to like worry about it, so let's leave it. So that's what, like a big thing is that people think, okay, like, like I did when I was younger, I thought, okay, now that I'm dieting, it means no oils. No butter, no fat. I was like doing that, that whole thing. No sugars, no carbs. You actually need to educate yourself about food a little bit and think that there is no magic food. I mean, mushrooms are pretty magic, but that's not in my diet plans. So there, there is no like special foods that you need to include. There aren't foods that you should avoid at all costs. I mean, sugar I tend to avoid, but if you have a little bit and you're in a calorie deficit, it's probably not gonna do anything. Like I actually, I actually believe if you're having sugars in a deficit, you're still, gonna, you're still gonna burn fat, you're in a deficit. But I don't think it's the healthiest thing to do, but in terms of body composition, I think you'll be, you'll be okay. So I think people like develop phobias around certain foods and especially when they get really deep into it, um, it becomes like a religion to them. So it's like, <laughs> they end up just praising broccoli. So really guys, just make sure you're not just mindlessly eating like that. Like make sure you know about your food, you know what's in it, and also you know what you're intolerant to. So for example, uh, people say oats is a diet food. Everyone's like, yeah, you need to have oats in your diet. Um, it's this classic staple for a lot of like bodybuilders, fitness people, whatever. But I found when I had oats, like I love them, but it just made me feel like I had this huge gut. Like I felt super bloated. So I remember in my off season, that's when I noticed it, I'd have a big bowl of oats and I was like, dude, I feel sick. And I was like, I felt full and my stomach felt like protruded. And when you're bulking and you feel like your stomach's out here, that is just, that is not good. That makes you literally just want to jump on the treddy and run away your sorrows. It is, it was a terrible feeling. And I was like, shit, I'm just literally bloating from the oats. So do you know what I did? Oats, every meal of the day, jump back on the treddy. Nah, I, um, I pulled oats out of my diet. Obviously changed it with rice. So, and that was, that worked well for me, fine. But if I didn't know about food, I'd be like, oh well, looks like this meal's making me fat now. Like you just wouldn't really, you know, you're not very in tune with your body, so you don't really know what's going on. But if you're like just aware of intolerances, you're aware with how certain foods make you feel, you'll be so much better off. So I guess as a recap of this little uh, mistake here is like educate yourself about food, try different foods, see how your body responds. And a lot of the time when you're able to include stuff that you like, you'll be, you'll be like pleasantly surprised about how easy it is to keep that in your diet and how you can do that and still achieve the results you wanna get. Now this last mistake might be a little bit controversial, but it's too much if it fits your macros. So I know there's a lot of um, if it fits your macros fans. And we need a shortened name for that that's not IIFYM, it's just too annoying. There's a lot of people that love if it fits your macros. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically saying you're not following a set meal plan. You know, every meal can change. You might have breakfast that's the same, but otherwise every meal is different. Now, and all you do is like jump on my fitness pal and you can kind of figure out what you can have. Now, I think this is great, especially when you first start dieting, using like this, this approach in small doses is really good because you can realize, like I said before, that you can eat certain foods and still lose weight. So it's great, but if you're obsessing with this, and I've done it before, it is a nightmare. So, and let me tell you why, and a lot of people don't actually realize this until they get there. So if you're constantly thinking, okay, what can I eat? What can I eat today? You're not following a meal plan. You're using it for 50 macros, using my fitness pal. You'll get to a point where you are constantly thinking about food. Like you're, especially when you're dieting, it's bad enough, but you get to a point where You'll have one meal and be like, okay, great. Now, what, what, what can I have now? Maybe if I have like a little bit of this, it means I can have some of that. And it is just like, it gets you really obsessive. So you'll end up like thinking, okay, I'm gonna starve, not eat breakfast, because then later I get to have like half a tub of Halo Top with, you know, half a berry. 
and it's just weird because then then you're relying so much on a calorie tracker like my fitness pal when the entries are, are different like the entries in my fitness pal are different from the entries on a general a generic brand of another product i guess my point is you, you become too focused on the specific you know nutritional information of one brand of product and how that differs from another brand of the exact same product i'm not talking if it's like a low fat alternative but it, you become so obsessed with the numbers and the macros that you're not thinking about the foods in general. And you're constantly eating different meals every single day. So you don't know which foods disagree with you. You don't know which foods you feel good or bad off. Uh, and it also, like you end up eating a lot more, like I guess just shit food, like sugar alcohol. So if you're doing if it's your macros, you're not following a meal plan, you're probably gonna have things like Halo Top ice cream in a lot of the time. I was having that like nearly every night when I was doing that. Um, and the sugar alcohols didn't really agree with my gut. So I, I think, because it's got a lot of that stuff and if you're having protein bars as well, it's a similar kind of deal. So they don't agree with everyone's guts. But that's the thing is that, because you're not following a meal plan, you have that much flexibility, you end up choosing things that might not be the best for you. So I think um, that's one bad thing about it is that you can, like you're prone to eating, I guess just empty food, like shit food. I mean, why wouldn't you want to have a balanced meal with like actual food with micronutrients and nutrition rather than something that just is macro based, you know? So I guess another point is that you ignore the micros. Instead of having you know, all the vitamins and minerals from vegetables and fruits, you're thinking about a Halo Top tub, which is just the, the macros itself. So I think you neglect the nutrition in food and then you become way too obsessed with numbers and it will do your head in guys. So I really, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I'd recommend following a meal plan that you love and that you, and that you enjoy. And then when you want to sub certain things out, like if you think uh, I want to change my dinner tonight, then change it up. Or if you want to change from chicken breast for dinner to a lean steak, don't worry about it, like that's that's fine. But I just recommend meal plan, follow a meal plan. My guys that I've got on, I just say pick a day out of the plan that you love and repeat that just for simplicity. Especially with me too, I find if I'm eating the same thing every single day, I know my body, say my body fat's going down, my weight's slowly going down, it's gonna be pretty measurable and accurate. But if all of a sudden I have Halo Top ice cream or something that just doesn't agree with me and I get a whole bit of water and my weight goes up, I'm not gonna know what's doing, what's doing that if, if I'm eating different shit every day. But if I'm eating the exact same thing every day, you get this trend and everything's like, you're just minimizing the variables into play. But if you're eating different food every single day, you've got a, a million different variables that have, that have come in that you don't know what's doing what. So I find for accuracy and just consistency with a plan, I think meal plans are far better suited towards me. And if I need to sub things out, I'll do that. And I'll use my fitness pal, but I don't rely on it, you know? And I can, I can basically do it in my head now at this point, it's, it's fine. But if you're relying on it, you'll become very obsessive. And at the start, it's great because you need different food. But in the long run, I don't think it's worth doing. So as a little recap, guys, mistake number one is not tracking, not knowing what you're eating. It's just eating mindlessly. Mistake number two is over dieting. So just eating way too little for your needs. Mistake number three is huge cheat days. Please don't do it, guys, unless you're absolutely shredded, in which case you can kind of do what you want. Well played. Mistake number four is not knowing about food, believing in certain special foods, and thinking you have to cut out certain things as well when you're dieting. And mistake number five is way too much reliance on if it fits your macros and getting obsessive with food. And before I let you go, guys, I did want to say, if you do want to get in the best shape of your life without breaking the bank, massivefam.com to get your program. It only is going to be available for about four days. So make sure you don't miss out, guys. Link is in the bio. But otherwise, that is it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Comment something great. What should you comment? Uh, comment your biggest diet mistake. I'll be curious to see what you guys, what mistakes you guys have made. Hopefully there's some interesting one. But otherwise, that is it from me. You guys know what to do. Stay in